Like in speech, a pause can be essential to conveying the point you're trying to make in your writing. Because of this, writers should be aware of the functions of the variety of punctuation marks available to show pauses. Today I want to talk about two of the most commonly misused punctuation marks I see as a copy editor. Ellipses and dashes, how to use popular pauses. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers. Because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burby, editor and writer. Let's start with rules for ellipses. Ellipses are the series of three periods used to show a word or phrase is missing from a sentence. They are not used to show a pause, and they do not replace a comma. The two most common places ellipses are used correctly is in academic writing and dialogue. Academic writing uses ellipses mainly when they're quoting someone to show that there is more to that quote that does not appear in their paper or book or whatever they happen to be writing. I often use ellipses in this video series and in my blog when I'm analyzing what's working in other writers' stories. An example of this is a quote I used when I looked at Katherine Davis's novel Versailles. Purposely oppressive, the vestibule, echoey, claustrophobic, at the foot of the staircase the whole thing opens wide, like breath expelled after passing a graveyard. The echoey, claustrophobic description goes on for two whole lines, and I cut it short because the point that I was trying to make by quoting this passage is that the staircase is no longer there. So I didn't think it was important to share the whole description of something that is not present in the story. In dialogue, ellipses are often used to show a character is trailing off or has been interrupted. They're saying there were supposed to be more words in this sentence, but they weren't spoken. It's not the same as when people misuse ellipses to show a pause in speech. If you want to show someone is pausing, but they're not omitting a word or phrase, then you need to use something other than ellipses. Often the best way to do this is to put the speech tag where you want that pause to be. So if your character is pausing to think about something, you can put the first part of that sentence, then add the speech tag he said, she said, and then continue the sentence. And that speech tag will mimic a pause in conversation in your reader's mind. Here are two examples of ellipses used correctly in dialogue. I managed a sheepish smile and read, They took her beautiful clothes away from her, dressed her in an old gray smock, and gave her wooden shoes. I assume you encountered them before. The detective's words trail off. In the first example, that character is continuing to read that story. But the writer didn't want to include that whole story in the dialogue, so they trailed off to show that it does continue and that the character is still reading. In the second example, the detective does not complete her sentence. There were supposed to be more words after before. That's how she is trailing off. Those other words are the ones that were omitted, which is why the ellipses works. I should note, I follow the Chicago Manual of Style, which means I put a space between each of the periods in an ellipses. Other style manuals don't do this, they just put all of the periods together. Both ways are technically correct. What you need to do in your writing is pick one style guide and use that for everything in your book, so it's consistent. You also need to let your copy editor know which one you're going with. I should note, most publishing houses do use Chicago Manual of Style. So remember, ellipses are not for pauses in dialogue, they are for words that are omitted in dialogue. Let's move on to the three main types of dashes hyphens, in dashes, and im dashes. Hyphens are the short dashes used in compound words and to separate phone numbers. Think of them as combiners. They take two things that might be otherwise separate and distinct and combine them into one thing. Here are a couple of examples. 555-123-4567 is a list of three different numbers. But when you add the hyphens, 555-123-4567, that number becomes a phone number. It becomes a whole series of numbers instead of three separate numbers. Open-mouthed means an open mouth. 
open hyphen mouthed could mean a literal open mouth, or it could mean speechlessness, shock, and or amazed. To create a hyphen, use the minus sign on your keyboard. I should also note that hyphens are not bracketed by spaces. You don't put open space hyphen space mouthed. You do open hyphen mouth. In dashes are slightly longer than hyphens, and they're used to show a connection between two things, but they are not combining those two things. In dashes are named because they are the length of the letter in. Often in dashes replace the word to, T-O, when you have a series of dates or numbers or something along those lines. Here are a few examples. Prolific mystery writer Agatha Christie lived from 1890 to 1976. The Colorado Rockies won 8 to 6. The relentless liberal conservative debates can be exhausting. When the in dash is in between two numbers, you do read it as the word two. The in dash shows two things are related, but it's not combining them into one thing like the hyphen does. One other time in dashes are used is when a word is split and part of the word appears on the top line and the other part appears on the next line. For example, Denver's botanical gardens are more than a home for hundreds of butterflies. They also contain a large invertebrate zoo. In order to get this to work appropriately, you do need to put a space after the in dash so the text application you are using knows that's where they need to start the new line. Normally, there are no spaces bracketing the in dash. We don't put the Colorado Rockies 1, 8, space, in dash, space, 6. We just put 8, in dash, 6. Recently, in dashes bracketed by spaces have been used to replace the longer M dash that we'll be talking about next. And that is because of e-readers. Because e-readers text can change based on the device being used, the text needs to be more dynamic. Putting spaces around these in dashes instead of using the longer M dash allows those line breaks to happen in a manner that's more pleasing to the eye. However, that is a more modern use of the in dash and there are some publishing houses and publications that are not okay with that. So if you're submitting to someone, make sure you find out which way they prefer and make sure, again, you tell your copy editor which one you're going with in your book. To create an in dash, write the first item that you want to connect with the in dash, then two minus signs, then the next item. When you hit the spacebar or the period after that, your writing application should automatically combine those two minus signs into one in dash. If it doesn't, you are going to have to Google the correct way to do it for your version of your text application. Let's move on to M dashes. These ones get their name because they're the length of the letter M, and they're the longest of these three dashes. M dashes are the most versatile, nuanced, and stylized of the dashes. They can be used in lots of situations. They can replace colons, commas, parentheses, even ellipses. What M dashes show is an interruption in the thought or the sentence. Here are some examples. Angelo screamed as he passed through the portal and read the card, Genie. Or, Angelo screamed as he passed through the portal and read the card, Genie. Here, a colon or an M dash could be used. She sighed and closed her dark eyes as if she tried to press the memory of those days of ritual away something I knew neither of us could do. Or, something I knew neither of us could do, bracketed by parentheses, or something I knew neither of us could do using an M dash instead of that comma. And the example from earlier, I assume you encountered them before, or I assume you encountered them before using an M dash instead of those ellipses. Again, note there are no spaces that bracket the M dash. It is directly connected to the word in front of it. I'd like to leave you with thoughts on ellipses and dashes from a copy editor. I know for most people, punctuation isn't the most exciting aspect of writing to study, but it is vital to the success of your writing. Even though the majority of the population probably can't articulate exactly what an ellipses does or exactly which dash should be used in which situation, 
They recognize when something is used incorrectly, and they can become confused. Also, many copy editors charge by the hour, so you're going to save yourself a lot of time and money if you learn the rules now and apply them the best that you can to your writing. So then when a copy editor goes through, they're really looking more for mistakes and not having to teach you the proper ways to use punctuation. If you're traditionally publishing, understand agents, acquiring editors, and publishers prefer well-written pieces. This means pieces that are already following the rules of grammar and punctuation. If you submit something to an agent or an editor or a publisher that is a mess as far as punctuation goes, it's going to be difficult to decipher and they're probably going to say no just because of that. So remember, ellipses are not used for pauses. They are used to show a word or phrase has been omitted. And there are three main types of dashes. The shortest hyphens combine things. The middle length ones in dashes show a connection between two items. And the longer M dashes show an interruption. When do you prefer to use ellipses and dashes? Do you have a style that you've developed for your writing? Share that in the comments below. And for more videos on the nuances of punctuation and how it can improve your writing, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers. Because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. You can find out more about me at www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a worksheet on how to use synonyms to develop your voice. Now that you have a better understanding of ellipses and dashes, it's your turn. Try incorporating a few into your current work in progress to see how they can ignite your ink.